耳其，不然你们就是在。南呃非洲大陆旁边那个小岛、哦，那但是他昨天逛了台北之后，决定要搬来台北住一阵子，<笑>大概一个半月。然后那呃他是 Coffee Africa 的创办人哦，然后也做了很多这个呃新媒体跟新闻，让科技进入新闻室的一些一些尝试。好、哦，那呃那他其实等于全世界跑透透啊，做看过很多跟呃就是 Coffee Africa 或是 G E 类似的呃的的的公民。科技行动啊，那所以他会分享一些他的见闻跟跟大家的一些一些感想。Thanks. So、um, just very quickly,、uh, for those who weren't here on Friday,、um, I'm with something called Code for Africa.、Um, the presentation that gives you an overview of all of our projects is at the short code on the bottom here. It's also I think on the hackpad、um, for the event.、Um, so I'm not going to go through. Oops, I'm not going to go through all of that. But basically, what we are is we're a continental movement. Africa is a very big place; it's a billion people, so it's maybe comparable with the region that you live in.、Um, it's far more backward in terms of technology adoption than your region is. But many of the social challenges that we're trying to、um, tackle are very, very similar to the ones that you face: employment creation, wealth creation,、um, accountable governments. Doesn't matter what form of government, as long as they're accountable to the people. Um, and at the moment, we've got citizen technology labs in those places with red dots on the continent.、Um, our name is very similar to something called Code for America. We're the opposite of Code for America. Code for America works to try and empower government. In Africa, the last thing we want is a strong government. The governments are usually corrupt or they're oppressive. So what we try and do is rather empower governments. So Code for America works top down. We work bottom up. We empower and we give citizens tools.、Um, and what I wanted to do to, here today is just show you some of the things that we've built and actually make an appeal to you. You're all working on very cool programs and projects, but the problem with everything that kind of people like us do is that we're passionate about the small thing that we're doing, and we don't think about how that creates a bigger impact. So what I'm trying to ask, and I'm going to show you why now, is that you try and think how your project can connect with and interact with other projects in the room here, how they can feed each other. This is a project in Argentina where there's a similar program, a sister program to to the African one, and this project which tracks、um, Senate expenses, so parliamentarians' expenses,、um, was built、um, as ins are based on inspiration. From Gov、um, Zero, how do you say it? Gov Zero. Gov Zero. When they did a presentation in Washington D.C., and they heard about the crowdsourcing, some of the crowdsourcing projects you did, they didn't know how you did it. They went back to Argentina and they built something called Voz Data, which was a massive citizen movement to help comb through documents and identify expenses and various other issues in tens of thousands of pages of documents. Very, very successful. They won international journalism and open data awards, and that was actually inspired by a project that came out of Taiwan. They've now made their code available on the net, and we're using it now in Africa to do very similar work. So, something that starts small in Taipei can potentially have big impacts and big ripples around the world. But you need to think about how you make it easy for other people to reuse your work. So I'm going to quickly give you a run through some of our projects.、Um, what we do at Code for Africa is we try and design for the lowest common denominator. We try wherever possible to design projects that are actually just run off a Google Google Fusion table. Nothing more complex on the back end. Why? Because you want to try and design it for mass adoption by others who don't have the same skills that we do. So this is one about a whole bunch of、uh, voter tools. To help them register, to help them check that they're not being manipulated by government agencies, to track election results.、Um, it was built、uh, for under five hundred dollars in Kenya. It's now been used in five countries across Africa and adopted by two African governments as the official government solution.、Um, the websites there, I'm not going to explain more. Al Jazeera did a short little documentary on the impact that it's having in Africa, but it's a demonstration again of how civic tools. Some of them started out. This started as a journalism project. Some of which starts out as a journalism project can actually end up becoming a government solution for for small amounts of money, as long as the idea is strong and very clear, 
and the technology is easy to reuse. But we don't just build our own stuff. This is the part of South Africa where I come from. Mpumalanga means land of the rising sun. So again, some weird connection with this part of the world. It's also in the east. Um, there's only four million people living in this whole state. It's mostly jungle and animals. But um, the big problem in Africa is scarcity of data. So what we did was we stole or we reused an American platform called Census Reporter. We rebuilt big parts of it. And we've now built what is um, a very, very powerful set of um, uh, uh, demographic um, data sets that you can mine down right to street level or house level uh, with all kinds of data. We've mashed up election, census, economic and other data, made it incredibly easy for people to reuse, including embedding, sharing and so forth. But most importantly, we've built an API onto this. So we're not building projects just because we want a project. We're building APIs so other people can reuse the data. Here's another project that's similar. So there are projects in the room here around um, tracking election promises, um, tracking judicial um, rulings. We've built similar resources in Africa. It's all about turning dead wood paper into structured electronic data that others can reuse. So we're busy digitizing city by city, all the city laws across Africa. Um, and with APIs on them so others can build on top of them. So that's called open bylaws. We're uh, starting to do the same now with national parliaments. This is something called Indigo. Um, and again, we're taking acts going back three, four hundred years, as long as they were colonialists. We're digitizing them and then you're tracking the evolution of how the laws change and how they get reused in different countries. So you can start comparing region with region. You can start also su suggesting, or citizens, can start suggesting better ways to formulate the laws that their parliaments create. Again, API driven. We're also digitizing and potentially slightly illegally, we are scraping every single online news article in 14 African countries. And we are then putting it through an entity extraction machine. We're pulling out all the information about people, companies, places, and other kinds of institutions and entities into it. And then we're turning that into an entity data set. So Open Calais exists in the north. It doesn't really have much reference in Africa. Or Freebase, which is the, uh, the end of the Google version. But from this, you can start tracking individuals across multiple countries, multiple media, as well as in legislation and various other data I'm about to show you now. Again, all open, all API driven that people can collect and reuse. Um, it allows you to then, as I showed you here, just analyze individuals. We're also working with activists who are trying to open up the courts. So similar to your, your legislation project, we've digitized the courts in 14 Southern African, or is it 16, Southern African countries. Um, initially just digitizing the judgments, but now we're starting to run entity extraction through them as well. So now you can see a politician or a family of a politician mentioned in the news, mentioned in courts, um, or, okay, or multiple other places. Um, so it's just very quickly because I've got a minute left. We're digitizing tens of thousands of documents. We've got half a million pages of documents at the moment, also digitized, entity extracted. We now, through Spend DB, we're busy doing the same with public finances, but more importantly, not just with the finances, but with contracts and procurement that goes through governments. So, um, so that you can start contracting or you can start tracking who gets rich of public services. Um, and all of that then helps us create these kinds of tools where this is a real-time assessment of who's in the news and who's in the judicial systems, the green spots of people, the, uh, sorry, the, the whatever they are, the darker green things, the very light green ones are companies, the orange ones are institutions, those are the people clogging up our courts. And then built on all of that data, we're then able to do fun projects like this, which is actually holding the media accountable. We can see which journalists are plagiarizing themselves or other media. So you can see there's a journalist there called Cindy Polota, who 98% of the news stories she writes are actually plagiarized from other sources. She doesn't rewrite them. So you can do things like journalism. Um, and then finally, uh, and then you can see who changes in their websites. Um, you can build these kinds of very detailed, um, this is all machine created. 
this is a politician, this is everything that he's connected with in South Africa where we've met 80,000 politicians and their families. Financial interests, memberships, where they own property and so forth. And the end result is you can start building these kinds of tools. This is Mozambique. You can start seeing which com com companies own the mineral wealth of an entire country and how they're connected. And if you go to the names, you'll see lots of Chinese and Taiwanese people owning the mineral wealth of Mozambique. The same applies to Nigeria, where we've done the same for the oil industry, which is currently stealing $10 billion per year in unpaid taxes from the people of Nigeria. Um, we, all of that is open source, it's APIs, so we make it all available for others to reuse and in fact we try and find money to help people build on top of it and then the techniques we use, we've created something called civic patterns where um, we try and distill some of the philosophies and the approaches. Um, but the, the invitation is please help us hack the system and help find ways that the Taiwanese data can tie into this African data. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Do you see Channel has a